I'm using a piece of MDF which comes in different thicknesses. This is six millimetre thick. I've got a small piece here which is about half that to three mil. It's good for collage because it it doesn't warp. It's quite hard to bend it, especially the thicker piece. So if you're going to stick a lot of things onto the surface and put um, lots of layers on which might shrink, it's it's really good to use because it's quite sturdy and stiff. But I've prepared it using just ordinary acrylic paint in this case. You can spend quite a lot of money on different primers for, for board preparation, but if you haven't got that, it's fine just to use some white paint, white acrylic paint. I'll just prime this piece to show you. Or you could, you could also use a water-based household primer, the sort that you put on your woodwork and you can wash the brushes with water. That is in fact an acrylic primer when it's cheap. And this, this little piece of board came out of a frame. I quite like to buy cheap frames and use the backing board to paint on. And then you know you, your piece of work is the right size to fit a frame if it turns out um, okay enough to frame. There, so you just want to you'd want to put a couple of layers of the white primer or white acrylic paint on and let them dry. I started to look through the old music book and find all the little nice pieces that I want to use for the collage. So the cover has this pretty border on the edge, so I might tear some bits of this out and use them in the composition. A few pages in I found this uh, facsimile of a the title page of the original piece of music, which I just think looks beautiful. I can't actually read the writing, but I would like to make this part of the image as well. And then the section of music which is going to appear in the uh, in the top corner of the composition. So I'm going to tear these up into smaller shapes. Just giving myself a variety of different sizes. You can get a bit bogged down in, in thinking too much sometimes. really hard to just leave things to chance. I mean some of it's chance and some of it is selection. Seems very decisive to tear something. The owner of this piece of music was called Ela Nightingale it looks like. <laughs> That's got to be in, hasn't it? Rather sweet. I'm not going to throw these away, I'm just going to put them over on one side and I might come back to use those. Right, now the thing is, when I photocopied my drawing, I photocopied it the right way around. And then I realised that when I do the image transfer, it's going to what it does is it, it sticks the image down to the board and then you peel away the paper and it just leaves the image stuck to the glue underneath you'll see you'll see when I demonstrate that but of course it means that it's going to be 
the other way around. You see, there's, there's the beak, there's the head, there's the bird's breast, the legs, the tail. So my composition is going to be flipped the other way around. That's interesting. <laughs> it would be awful if I made things easy for myself, wouldn't it? Right, you stay there, bird. And I'll assemble the collage part first. For the collage and for the image transfer, I'm going to use Mod Podge, which is a, a glue. I presume it's a PVA glue, but the thing about it is, and the important thing with image transfer, is that when it's dry, it doesn't re-wet. Now, the thing with a lot of PVA glues is that when they're, they're washable PVA, it says usually says on the container, washable PVA. Um, so if you get it in your clothes, it'll wash out. But it doesn't work for image transfer because what you do is you glue the image down face down. And when the glue is dry, you wet the back of the paper and remove the paper. So you must make sure that you, anything you, you, you use on the surfaces underneath don't re-wet after, they, after they've dried and you add water to them. You don't want them to re-wet. So you want to avoid anything that says washable on it, washable PVA. It's fine to use for collage, but if um, in the layers underneath any image transfer, if you use any of this, it will re-wet and it'll disturb the, the, the layers underneath. So Mod Podge is the stuff. It's about eight pounds for a container like that. Um, and a little bit goes quite a long way. It's water soluble while it's wet, but it's waterproof after it's dry. So just thinking again, the bird's going to go this way around. I've, I've decided to use this composition, um, but probably, so the bird's eye, there's the eye. Just marking the thirds approximately third of the way up, third of the way across. And in my sketch, I had the eye about there, so that the tail came right over from this side. And I think I could bring it in and down a bit, probably. I'm just beginning to think about where I want to put the collage elements. Yeah, I'll probably go there. So the corner piece, I'm going to have the corner um, over here. I don't know whether to have Ela Nightingale showing or not. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe I'll tear it off and but I'll save it in case I decide to slide it in somewhere else in the collage. collage is the early decisions you make may end up getting covered up with other things anyway so it really doesn't matter That's going to go on first. Then, right, do you know, I think I might cut the bird out. It's going to be easier to see the arrangement. I'll just cut 
an old brush, an old, old brush, three quarter inch lang nickel brush. It's been well abused this thing so I don't mind using it for glue. And this Mod Podge is it's like the bottom of the container and it's got quite stiff so don't add a bit of water to it just to make it brush out a bit more easily. Just scraping the glue off the brush mostly and I'm just using the gluey brush just to press down that piece of paper that I stuck on. It's also spreading the paint around a bit in quite a nice way. Rather than putting the glue on the back of the pieces and trying to stick them on it's much easier to get an idea of where you want the piece to stick and then put the glue on your board. Oops. And put the dry piece onto the gluey board, especially with thinner paper. It's a nightmare if you start trying to put glue onto thin paper and then lift it up, put it on your board, because it'll go all floppy and horrible. Deliberately not lining it up. I want it to be a little bit squiffy. I'm just squeezing the, the glue out from the middle towards the edges. Get that piece to stick down really well. Inevitable dog hairs I get in there. So that's, that's where the bird's going. Something like that. And the music was this piece and this piece, wasn't it? There. No. Allegretto goes there. Oh, that's a nice shape. I suppose it could actually go like that and be behind the bird a bit.
I'm just using a bit of white paint to uh, knock back some bits of the music so that they're a bit less, uh, a bit less strong visually. This is glaze, glazing medium, which is an acrylic medium you add to paint when you want to put really thin layers on, which allow underneath layers to show through. It looks white when it's wet and it dries clear. So it's like an acrylic varnish in a way. It can be used as a varnish, it's a final layer of the collage. I usually use it with colour mixed with it. It's a little tiny bit of ultramarine. There. Get the cyan out as well. Some ultramarine there and some cyan. Brushes that have got a little bit of white on it as well, it doesn't matter. It's quite an interesting brush, this, it's got a, a funny haircut. Um, Makes really interesting marks. They remind me a bit of the, the lines on the music. Let's do the cyan this time. What a completely different blue that is. Much more like turquoise, really. I decided to begin to add more colour at this stage before I do the image transfer. So I've just used the blues that I've um, got out already, the ultramarine and the cyan, and I've added yellow, which is uh, an Amsterdam paint, it's a free sample I got, it's just called greenish yellow. Quite a garish colour when you just get it out. That nice bright sunshiny sort of yellow. Try not to be too literal with this, as in making a, a scene. to stay in the sort of the spirit of the Mark Hurled artworks. I like to scrape through paint with the back end of the brush to get texture in. Thinking about the texture of rough weedy grass. Good when I've decided exactly where the bird is going to go, I'm going to mark it out with um, a water-soluble pencil, watercolour pencil. 
so that I know exactly where to put the glue. Where's my third? Where's my third? Where's its eye? And I quite like the way this piece of music sort of fits along its tail. That was, I have to say, that was partly accident and partly design. So my gluey area is going to have to go within this shape. And I'm using a watercolour pencil because I can just get rid of it. Afterwards I can wash it off afterwards. Unless it gets glue on top of it, but it doesn't matter anyway. This is the first of several layers, I should think. Also, you can see I've um, trimmed around the bird a bit more carefully now. Right. So that's going to be stuck down, face downwards. And I've got some new Mod Podge here. Newish. Well, you can use a brush or a glue spreader. Just got the glue spreader here. Doesn't matter what you put it on with. But you want to make sure you get a really nice even layer. Turned it around because it's easier to reach this side. to make sure I don't get any gaps underneath the bird so I'm just curving it so that it sticks down sort of from the middle to the ends and what I want to be really careful of is that I don't get any glue any mod podge on this surface of the paper so I've got to be really when I get to the edge I've got to make sure it doesn't come get on my fingers and then get transferred back onto this middle area here because if it does it makes it re really difficult to re-wet the paper to peel it off as at the same time I'm trying not to get any bubbles underneath it good way to finish off the pressing is to get a spare photocopy, put it on top and then just give it 
put all the good press down to make that and peel that off before it sticks. Okay, just going to give it a check. Everything looks nice and flat. Right, now that has to be absolutely bone dry before I do the next bit. Um, so all the wet glue underneath here has to have a chance to soak through the paper and evaporate. Any moisture has to, to come off it. And uh, so you really have to be patient and wait for the drying to happen. Ideally, and I might even do this, I might leave this overnight and come back to my filming tomorrow. Uh, 